Okay gang, uh, my Graphcom kids, what we're going to do is take a little trip into the Graphcom darkroom and discover where the magic happens with traditional black and white photography. So we have the light tight cylindrical door in the back corner of the shop. Um, you see that the sign up there says dark room in use. We're going to enter the door, cylindrical door one at a time. Just gonna grab the red rail and slowly turn the cylindrical door. And we are going to step into the dark room environment. Okay, now what you'll notice from what we've talked about is that this part of the trip, which is going to be doing photograms, enlargements, and prints, that is done in what's called red safe light. So this is the environment that you will be working in. Now, it's not as dark as you think, okay? The red safe light is um, a particular filtered light that does not affect the photographic paper that we will be using to develop our prints. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, first thing, walk over to where our red vent light is on because we want to make sure from a safety point of view, the red, uh, the red light for the ventilation system is on. That's an indicator that the ventilation system is operational. Also in the dark room, you can hear that the vents are actually on and operational. That's the first thing you do from a safety point of view of working in our dark room is to make sure that the ventilation system is on and operational and ours is. Okay, cool. So I'm going to turn on the white lights to just take a better look at the dark room. So once again, we've spoke about this left to right kind of workflow um, when we're doing photography here in uh, good old Graphcom. So the actual room itself is set up left to right. As we walk into the room, these machines here are um, enlargers and we're going to take a closer look at them learn how to operate them. So you'll be working the enlargers, you'll be walking to the right. Once you expose your photographic paper to light, you'll be coming here to the development area and we will be developing our prints with chemistry. Um, developer for photo paper, stop bath for photo paper, fixer for photo paper and water. Um, safety again, um, eye protection is absolutely required, non-negotiable, you need to wear safety goggles when you're working in here. Also, safety gloves. We are working with chemicals, so we wanna make sure that we are working with vinyl gloves, safety glasses, and an apron. Uh, so the vents are on, we're going to suit up, so we're gonna be working safe, and we're gonna make some photographic magic here. As we kind of take a little turn around the darkroom, you see there's other enlargers. Um, you see the other sink that we'll be using to develop film in and then you're going to see our paper safe, our photo paper safe. This is always kept shut. We go in there, we open it just very briefly, only under red light and conditions, snatch a piece of paper out of there and make sure we shut it again so we don't expose all the raw photo paper. Okay, so um, basic tour of the dark room. Let's go take a look, closer look at one of the enlargers. Okay. Here we have our Bessler 67 enlarger, and you'll notice as we look around the room, there, there are quite a few enlargers. Um, they all are very similar. They all operate the same. Basically, it's a light source with a lens and an aperture, and we have talked about that. So um, we have our copy board right here. This is where we're going to be placing our photographic easels. This is a photographic easel for a five, for an eight by 10. This is a photographic easel for a five by seven. If you look very closely, they have slots and this is where you will slide your photographic paper into. It's got these little half moon cutouts here. That's where we tap with our fingers to um, put the photographic paper inside the paper easel. So if we're gonna use a five by, make a five by seven, we would use this easel. 
if we were going to be using an 8x10, we would be using this easel. Okay, so we're just going to look at the copy board. This is where we're going to rest our photographic paper. We put our easel down there. And we have a clock right here, which is a timer. But we're going to be doing our timing a little bit different. Basically, we're going to just take this clock and just use it as an on and off switch. We're just going to hit this button right here. Uh, let me get the camera going there. Okay, cool. Right here, on and off, to turn that light on and off. Okay, so we have the copy board. We have the print head itself. We're just going to open it up, take a look at it. And it's see the light source that's in there. We've got condensered, which is ground glass con condensers. I'm just gonna cover this back up again. We're going to turn it to the side so we can see what's going on here. We have this arm that raises up, that raises the print head up and down. And that's how we can get at what's called our slide mount. This is our slide mount. When we put in our photographic negatives, we're going to slide our negatives inside the slide mount. And then we're going to put it back into the enlarger. and we're gonna drop this arm down. Okay, we're gonna turn it to look at the other side of the enlarger. And we have one knob that we control, that we can raise and lower the print head, and that controls the light field on the enlarger. And then we have this other knob, which works the bellows, which is here, that we control our focus. Right here, we have our lens and aperture ring. We turn that aperture click by click to increase or decrease the amount of light coming through the enlarger. And that light will come through the print head, through the aperture, down onto the copy board and the paper easel exposing your paper to white light. Okay, so once again, aperture right here, bellows, your light sources inside the print head, focus knob, Your knob that allows you to raise and lower the print head, making bigger or smaller light fields to make bigger or smaller prints. And then we have our slide mount itself. And we've got our on and off button. Cool. All right, I'm just gonna spin this around a little bit in its usual position. And I'm going to make sure that the slide mount is position. There's two little pins in there that lines up. There's two little cutaways here. And these will line up with the pins right in here. Got to take a real close look at it. And then we drop the arm down. You want to make sure that the print head is nice and snug so you're not leaking any light here. See, we're leaking light now. That's not how we want to operate. We want to close this down to make sure we're not leaking any light and we're gonna shut the light off. Okay, what we're gonna do first to get familiar with the chemistry and familiar with the enlarger itself is do something called a photogram. A photogram is a picture without using a camera per se. We're gonna basically use light sensitive paper, the light source, the enlarger as the light source, and we are going to 
use some basic interesting three-dimensional objects, project the light down onto the light sensitive paper, creating what's called a photogram. So we're going to be using the enlarger, we're going to be using the chemistry to create our photogram. So I'm going to go into red light situation now and that kind of workflow so you, we can actually do this with the photographic paper. So I'm going to come over to the switches and we are now in red safe light. Got my safety glasses on. I'm going to put my gloves on. Apron on, vents are working, safe, 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 good to go. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to turn on the switch on the little clock here, which will turn the light source on. First thing we need to do when we're doing a photogram is to set our enlarger up. So, I turn the light on and you can see that the light is projecting down onto the copy board, um, but it's a little tiny little rectangle of light. Um, this is an 8x10 paper easel, so what we want to do is raise the print head so the light field is beyond the edges of our paper easel. So it's a little bigger, bigger now. And then we want to turn the focus wheel. And we want to create, again, a very, very big field of light that's just beyond the edges of the paper easel. Okay. So, we have that going on. Now I'm just going to remove the paper easel really quick. And I want us to look at the light field that we are creating. You want to make the edges of the light field really super sharp. And we do that by working our focus knob. You can see, oops, that's a little too blurry. That's a little too blurry. We're watching the edge of that light field. You want to turn that focus knob to the edge of the, the light field is nice and sharp. And that'll do. Okay, so we're going to position our paper easel for 8x10 because we're going to make an 8x10 photogram. All right, and I'm going to shut off the white light. I'm going to come here on the little button on the clock, just turn the white light off. You're going to be controlling light and time by controlling your aperture, how much light is coming through that aperture, and for how long. We are going to not use the little clock here, the little timer here, because our exposure times are going to be really short. We are going to count consistently by thousands. I don't care what you count. Count elephants, count Mississippis, count 1000s. Whatever you count, make sure you just count consistently. Okay, so you uh, get consistent results whenever you're doing your photographic prints. For instance, I'm gonna turn the light on now. 1001, 1002, 1003, shut the light off, and so on. Okay, before I go get the photographic paper though, I'm gonna go and adjust my aperture. So I'm gonna turn on the light, and I'm going to make sure that I'm, in this case, for doing the photogram, opening that aperture to its widest point, to its brightest or widest point. So that's wide open. You would understand the position of the aperture by turning the aperture knob and saying it could be one, two, three, three and you see that light fields getting brighter clicks from the dimmest so you can say okay I will ask you where is your aperture setting and you need to remember where you set it to one two three clicks from the dimmest four clicks from the dimmest five clicks from the dimmest or in this case the widest brightest point so I'm always going to ask you two questions when you do your prints what is the position of your aperture and how long do you expose the material for? So you're going to say, I had my aperture wide open and I'm going to expose my paper for five seconds to do my photogram. Okay, so the aperture is set to its widest points. You note that, remember that. And now I'm gonna turn the light off because I'm going to grab photographic paper. 
So I'm gonna turn around, go to my photographic paper safe, raise it up. And I'm gonna to remember to shut that paper safe. Now this paper will not react to red safe light. It will not react to red safe light. It's got two sides. Remember, light sensitive material. We've been talking about this all year. An emulsion, which in this case is the shiny side. The emulsion for photographic paper is kind of the shiny side. The base in this instance is the dull side. That's different than what we've been dealing with so far. Shiny is emulsion, dull is base. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the photographic paper real close to my body because we don't want to take any risks that it's going to be exposed to any other type of white light. I'm going to get back to my enlarger area and I'm going to position, in this case, the photographic paper right on the paper easel with the emulsion side up, the shiny side up. And now I'm gonna have a little fun. I'm going to take some three-dimensional objects. I have a little translucent rubber octopus. Shocker there, I'm just gonna position that octopus right there on the photographic paper. Um, let's see what else do I have. Oh, I have this big old school pipe wrench. I'm gonna put that right there and Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Um, I'm just going to take a pair of goggles, just a pair of safety glasses, and I'm going to compose that. I'm going to make it look interesting on the paper. So I've used my three dimensional objects. This works really well with objects that are translucent, like glass and things like that, or plastic or rubber. And then if you use objects that are real dense, like the wrench, it'll give you a nice sharp silhouette if you do this right. Okay, so I've composed all of my three-dimensional elements on top of the photographic paper. My aperture is set to the brightest point, the widest or brightest point, and I'm gonna expose this paper for five seconds. I'm gonna turn on the switch, 1001. 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. And I turn the light off. Awesome. Now I'm gonna take the photographic paper and I'm gonna walk over to our development sink. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a look at the sink and we have one pan of developer for paper one pan for stop bath that will stop the chemical reaction for paper. We've got the fixer, which will fix that emulsion and harden the emulsion. And then we've got a sink that we're just gonna turn on a little bit so the water's constantly running and flushing out um, of the sink pan. All right, two minute development time for paper. Two minute development time. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the photographic paper put it directly into the developer pan. And I'm gonna gently rock the development pan back and forth with my fingertips. And you can see, woo, like magic, the image is starting to develop. And now, I'm demonstrating here, so I'm not strictly watching my time. But if you're doing this for real, you should strictly be watching your time for a solid two minute development time. We have a set of tongs here. You wanna make sure that the photographic paper is completely submerged. Sometimes we flip it to make sure the emulsion is facing down to make sure that that emulsion is getting a nice bath of developer chemistry. I'm using the tongs just gently rocking the pan gently with my gloved hand. And you can see that the translucent portions of the octopus has a little bit of tone. The solid parts of the wrench is a little bit, is hard, a nice hard silhouette. And just gonna fish this 
out of there and just ensure that that photographic paper is being bathed with the developer. Okay, once again, this is a demonstration. If you're doing it for real, a solid two minute developer. Once you're done with the two minute cycle, you're gonna take the tongs, drip the excess chemistry into the pan. Drip the excess chemistry into the pan and I'm gonna move it to the next stage. I need to stop that chemical reaction. So I move it into my stop bath. I move it into my stop bath and make sure it's submerged. Each tray has its own set of tongs. We're working left to right. Once again, working left to right. The stop bath for paper is one minute. You're gonna agitate it the entire time. Take your tongs, once again, maybe give it a flip to make sure the emulsion is being truly submerged into the chemistry. Gently flip it back over. You don't want to scratch your emulsion. At the end of a one minute, a solid one minute stop bath, we move it to the fix. Now the fix, once again, two minutes, constant agitation. So that's gonna fix that image, harden that emulsion so it's there forever and ever. And once again, you can get real creative with this. You can do jewelry, you can do anything translucent or transparent comes up really kind of visually cool looking. Solid objects, seashells. Um, once again, people get very, very creative with doing photograms and have a lot of fun making some visual compositions without using a camera, just using an enlarger and using photographic paper. Okay, once again, when you're doing this for live and not during a demo, you're going to strictly watch your time. And now I can move it to the wash basin for the rinse, for the rinse. Now, you're gonna rinse it with water for five minutes. Five minute rinse in the water. You don't need to wait the entire five minutes though to show your instructor. Um, you could give it a quick rinse just to get some of that excess chemistry off. And then you could bring it out to your instructor in white light or daylight and take a look at your image. You always need to have the answer to these two questions. What was your exposure time and what was your aperture setting? How far, how many clicks did you turn the aperture ring from the dimmest point resulting in your image? So it would be, in this case, the aperture was at its brightest point and I exposed the print for five seconds. Okay, but you know, that may vary. You may, we'll talk about test prints in, in, in the future. But you'll need to know, yes, instructor, I, <laughs> I exposed it for three seconds, let's just say, and the aperture was set two clicks from the dimmest. If you don't have the answer to these questions, I can't guide you to help you improve on your exposure times to get the best prints. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this out real quick and I'm going to turn on the white lights just so we can take a look at it. Aha, so here we have, here we have, our photogram, kinda cool. Um, you see the wrench, the silhouette of the wrench, nice hard edge, you see the um, octopus, and some of the tonality of the octopus and then the tonality of the safety glasses that are there. So translucent things come up really, really kind of cool. Um, again, here is, here is the octopus that I used, just a little toy rubber octopus. Okay, so our photo, photogram. Uh, once it's done and you're happy with it, we're gonna come over to the line 